and welcome to another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, from mrgoff.com. Today's video will be focused on the factors that affect demand. Let's start with a quick recap. A change in the price of a product results in a movement along the demand curve. This could be an expansion of demand if the price goes down and demand increases, or a contraction of demand if the price goes up and demand decreases. There are factors other than a change in the price of the product that can cause the entire demand curve to shift. It could shift to the left with demand decreasing, or it could shift to the right with demand increasing. We're going to go on and take a look at some of the reasons why it might shift either left or right. If you look at the diagrams here, notice that it wouldn't matter where we put the price line. It would still show that for a left shift of demand, there would always be less demanded at each particular price. And for a right shift of demand, there would be more of the product demanded at each particular price. The factors that can shift demand are income, marketing, tastes and fashion, substitutes, complements, population, government policies, the economic situation, and price expectations. We're going to go on and take a look at each of these in more detail now. If average incomes rise, then people are able to afford more goods and services, and so demand for those goods and services will shift to the right. In a period of rising unemployment or high inflation, real incomes may in fact be going down. This will cause demand to shift to the left as people restrict the amount of money they spend on goods and services. A successful marketing campaign will make a product more desirable, leading to a right shift of demand. With social media so influential in today's society, a failure to handle negative publicity could easily result in a left shift of demand for a product or a corporation. Tastes and fashion are always changing. Some things come back into fashion years after they've gone out of fashion. Other things go out of fashion for a very good reason. If tastes change and something becomes more fashionable, demand for that product will go up, causing a right shift of demand. If something goes out of fashion, then there will be a left shift of demand. A substitute good is an alternative good that a customer might choose to purchase instead of buying your product. Here we can see a food court. Although each of the stores sells very different types of food, they are each competing to sell meals to the customers and are a substitute for one another. If you don't get a meal from one, you might choose to get one from one of the other stores there. If the price of a substitute good for our product goes up, then demand for our product will go up as well. This is because some of the people who are going to buy that substitute good will now switch from the more expensive substitute to our product, causing a right shift of demand for us. On the other hand, if the price of a substitute for our product goes down, then there will be a left shift of demand for our product, as some of our customers will now opt for the cheaper substitute product. If one of our stores in the food court raised their prices, they might lose customers to the other businesses in the food court. On the other hand, if they lowered their prices, they might be able to attract customers away from those other businesses. Complementary goods are goods that go together. An example might be, games consoles and the games that can be played upon them. If there is an increase in demand for one product, it will also lead to an increase in demand for the complementary goods that are sold alongside it. In this case, if we sell more consoles, it stands to reason that we are also likely to sell more games for those consoles. Therefore, we can conclude that an increase in demand for a complementary good will lead to an increase in demand for our good as well. And in the same way, a left shift of demand for a complementary good would lead to a left shift of demand for our good as well. The total population can change due to births and deaths, as well as immigration and emigration. If the level of the population increases, there are simply more people to buy goods and services, and therefore there will be a right shift of demand. 
The opposite is true if the population decreases, it will result in a left shift of demand. Changes to population demographics can also have a big influence on demand. Population demographics refers to the makeup of the population. We might talk about the difference between the number of men and women, or the number of young and old. Much of the world has an ageing population with a very big demand for aged care services. The government sets the level of tax that consumers have to pay. This determines how much money they have left to spend on other goods and services. If taxes are raised, they have less money left and therefore there is a left shift of demand for all other products. If taxes are lowered, they have more money left over and therefore there is a right shift of demand for other products. Sometimes the government provides subsidies to either firms or consumers to make products cheaper. This leads to a right shift of demand for these products. The government provides these subsidies to encourage the consumption of goods that have an external benefit, such as electric cars that lower the amount of pollution in the atmosphere. If people expect the price of a product to go up in the future, they may buy more of it now to lock in the lower price or perhaps to sell it later for a profit when the price does go up. Both of these would lead to a right shift of demand for that product right now. If the price of a product is expected to go down, then consumers may wait before buying it and that would lead to a left shift of demand right now. To recap the most important points, if a product's price changes, there will be a movement along the demand curve. If something else related to the product changes, there will be a movement of the demand curve, either left or right. This has been a list of the factors that affect demand directly. You will need to learn this list of factors. Many students have difficulty differentiating between the factors that affect demand and those that affect supply. As you will learn later, both of these can have an effect on market equilibrium price and market equilibrium quantity, and so it can get quite confusing. That brings us to the end of this video on the factors that affect demand. I've been Mr Goff from MrGoff.com. I hope you'll join me again for our next video where we'll be looking at the elasticity of demand. Until then, it's bye for now.